Well, good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of our In the Word podcast. We are all the way on the last day of February. Leap day, actually. That once every four years day. So uh, we are glad that you can join with us. It's hard to believe that tomorrow is March, isn't it? Man, we're already getting there. But uh, we're so glad that you're on this journey with us. If you're listening to this podcast, then most likely you're uh, trudging right through with us as we study the Word of God this year. Uh, And we're excited that you've decided to commit this year to being in the Word, to studying no matter what plan you're using, whether you're just uh, looking through different portions of Scripture, doing the two-week plan, whether you're going through the entirety of God's Word with us over the course of of 12 months. We're excited that you're doing this with us. And so thank you all for that. And we are currently in the book of Numbers. We've already made it. This is our, what, our fourth book? Fourth mm-hmm. book, I think. Job, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Fifth book. Fifth, yeah. Fifth book. The book of Numbers. And so we are working our way through that, looking at the Israelites as they set out from uh, Mount Sinai. They've been camped there at Mount Sinai. Now they're setting out and getting ready to go uh, towards the Promised Land. And we actually see them get there this year, this week. And so... Uh, But we'll go into a little bit more detail about that in just a second. Well, as always, I'm joined by our Minister of Music, Byron Marshall, and our Children's Director, Michaela Norris. Uh, And and the way this works is we just each week share different insights and thoughts that we have as we read through the Scriptures, ways that we see God uh, in the text, and and things about uh, that He's revealing to us as we read, because we're right on this journey with you. This is not just us coming together and doing something separate. This is us walking through the Word of God alongside you, and then sharing what God's been teaching us. And so, uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started with Byron. I think you're going to share your your insights. Yeah, well, hello everyone. Good to be back with you this week. Um, So for me, I have decided to camp out with Numbers 14 uh, in my comments for this week. Um, Basically, this idea that or a reminder, rather, that we need to remember to keep our focus on God and, and not on the obstacles, whatever those obstacles may be, whatever size those obstacles may be in our lives. Um, the fear has a real way of paralyzing um, us, even the strongest of people. Um, when we perceive a threat to our well-being or uh, some kind of obstacle standing between us and our goals, Uh, We often fear that the overall plan for our lives is in serious trouble. Um, In those times, we need to remember the promise of God. Uh, When the Israelite uh, spies set out on that reconnaissance mission to assess the land of Canaan, um, they had no idea what they would be encountering. Uh, It was a great honor to be chosen by Moses for such an assignment. And, uh, of course, Moses selected the top leaders from each of the 12 tribes uh, for that uh, task. Yet all their training and leadership experience did not uh, really prepare them for something so overwhelming. Uh, Who had ever heard of a grape cluster so big that it had to be carried on a pole by two men? Um, You know, who could possibly be prepared for uh, Canaanite warriors so uh, humongous that they dwarfed uh, the best of the Israel's uh, Israelite army. Um, it's no wonder these spies felt a whirling mix of emotions as they headed back to their commander in chief to give their report. Uh, so, I mean, you can imagine this scene. Um, I was almost kind of picturing it kind of like, you know, these movies like, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids when everything is just, <laughs> they're so tiny and everything is so ginormous and uh, just overwhelmingly wowing. Um, So, you know, this is quite a scene to sort of picture here in the scale of it. Uh, Moses and Aaron gathered the people to hear the news. The spies confirmed that the promised land was indeed everything God said it would be. But they focused on what they saw as the obstacles to their taking the land, namely the giants who lived there. Um, They gave an accurate report, but they kind of failed to give the whole story. Um, But for Joshua and Caleb, um, kind of were the only ones who really spoke the whole truth. Uh, These faithful men recounted what they had seen, and then they uh, reiterated it in their own words, um, you know, the promises of God that had brought them to this point, or to his point, rather, um, which in the scripture, in verse 8 9, it said, If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. 
Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Uh, Joshua and Caleb lived to see the promised land, but only because they focused on the goal God laid out for them and not on the obstacles standing in their way. Um, so, you know, the blessings God has in store for you and I um, are just as rich, I think. And we should never allow, uh, you know, something like short-sighted vision, um, especially one focused on obstacles, to block um, things that are far-reaching in what the Lord has planned for us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go go into too much detail because I'm I'm kind of following those exact same lines. But yeah, how often do we allow fear to derail us uh, and, and to keep us um, from really living living out a, 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 in a spirit of faith and living out the lives that God has wanted us to? And I, I, man, that's one of those things. That's one of those things that God made so evident to me when we were in in in, in Bangladesh uh, several you know months back. You know, I'm talking with these people and we're interacting. And for the most part, those that we're talking to and interacting with are so friendly. But I just remember there being, even getting ready to go on that trip, there being such a spirit of, you know, nervousness and anxiety and just kind of uh, fear even. And and a lot of the people that were talking to me and speaking to me, there was definitely this kind of sense of fear. And I just remember one of the the takeaways I had of that is, man, how, how... how much has the enemy deceived us into having this spirit of fear to keep us from doing exactly what God has called us to do? Yeah. Mm. It'll get you every time if you're not careful. Yep. All right, Miss Michaela? Um, well, Leviticus was hard. So I was, a, I was just a couple days behind, but um, Numbers 11 really stuck out to me. In my Bible, it is... Um, like, kind of captioned, the people complain. <laughs> so, like, God has done all of this stuff. People complain? I mean... <laughs> yeah, the people complain. <laughs> Church people complain? No, <laughs> not God's people. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> so, God has done all this stuff. He freed them from slavery. He parted the Red Sea. He's brought them this far. And the people just, like, really don't... They're not loving it. They just, they want to go back, and um, they're so, like, kind of like Byron said, like, they're so fearful of um, not having the comfortable things that they were used to, even though they were enslaved, um, and just being in this, in this spot where they just have to fully depend on God, that they would rather be enslaved than to have to put their trust in God, um, and that just kind of stuck out to me, because, like, I know I like to be the one in control, and giving that control to God sometimes is really, really hard. Um, and sometimes it almost feels like it's easier to just be in control, but things kind of be terrible than to give it to God and um, have such a richer life. Um, but it just kind of points back to like, God has this bigger plan and sometimes it's terrible in the moment, but his plan is the better plan if we give that control up to him. So that's kind of what I pulled out of it this week. It's good. It's good. Mm, it's so good. Oh well, mine mine was very similar to Byron's. I I chose to kind of look at the reports of the spies, and one of the things that just for me anyway, as I as I read this story, it's just so heartbreaking. Is they're going into the promised land. They're spying out the promised land. But why is it called the promised land? Who, who is given, who's told them that this is the promised land? Why, why, why is he referring to this as the promised land? Because it's the land that God has promised them. Now, you would think, you know, kind of going off what Michaela said as well, you would think that at this point, God has proven himself to the point that when God says, hey, this is something that I'm giving you, they're going to operate out of a spirit of faith. They're gonna they're gonna go up and they're gonna take it because God has given it to us. And that's not that's not what we see take place. What we see is they go in, they spy out the land, you know, like Byron was saying, the, the twelve spies go in. And of those twelve, two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they come back, and man, they're just they're they're ready to go. They're, they're, this is the land is good, it's everything that we were promised, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. You know, like you said, they bring back the, the great cluster. 
uh, you know, and just and it's just full. And, I, and I've seen, I had a friend you know, when we were in Alabama who we would go to his house to pick grapes because we would make jelly. And uh, I just remember thinking, man, because I, I used to try to grow grapes and I couldn't get them to come. But for some reason, I don't know if it was the fertilizer he was using or what it was, but like he'd have these just bushes just loaded down with grapes. And so I could see how, you know, it could take two guys if, if they're cutting, you know, just a whole cluster of, like a whole grouping of grapes, I could see how, man, it could take two guys to carry that. And so the point is that it's a good land. It's a, it's a, uh, a land that, that is full of provision, just like God had promised him. But then, even you know, as Byron was saying, the other ten, they come back, and a lot of their nervousness is centered around the difficulty of the task. They're looking and they see the the cities are fortified. They see that that the you know that the enemies are encamped and entrenched against them, and that it's not going to be something very easy. And instead of leaning into the promise, they lean into the fear. Uh, I tend to think that you know because because it goes on and, and the report gets worse and worse. You know, like at first they're just saying you know hey. The enemies are encamped against us. They're stronger. They're more numerous than we are. We can't do this. And Joshua and Caleb are saying, you know, no, we can do this. At one point in verse 30, they say, let's go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. And it's only then that the rest of the men who had gone up with them begin to bring in even more negative reports. It's almost like they, they have to hyperbolize it. They have to go even bigger to make the people nervous and afraid because they're afraid of what could happen. I don't necessarily personally think that the people that they're seeing are giants. I mean, they, they could have been um, because we definitely see, you know, instances like with the Philistines and with Goliath and things like that, that there were obviously larger individuals. Um, but when, when I read this and the appearance of the Nephilim and stuff, I, I think this is probably more them creating some kind of story because they were the only ones that went in to see it. They're the only ones that saw... Uh, the land, and so they're trying to create fear amongst the people to prevent them from going in because they're afraid of what could happen if they do. And and this is really where my takeaway comes in. And I just can't help, help I couldn't help but think how often like these people they're standing on the edge of something great. God has already promised this to them. It's theirs. It's right there for the taking. So they're standing on the edge of something great, but they're too afraid to go in and take it. And I can't help but think, how often does that describe even us? How often do we also stand on the edge of something great? Uh, I think I, I think there are so many times that God has called us and God wants to use us within His church to do great things for his kingdom, to make a difference in the lives of those around us, to reach the lost, to help the hurting, to uh, to do these great tasks for God. But for some reason or the other, whether it's fear of rejection or indifference to others, we're simply too afraid to go in and take it. We're too afraid to do what God has promised us he'll do. Um, it's interesting that, and I don't want to get too far ahead because we'll, we'll get to the book of Joshua here in a few weeks, but it's interesting that 40 years from now, these, not this generation, this generation as a penalty is going to, going to all die in the wilderness, but with the exception of Joshua and Caleb. But it's interesting that 40 years in the future, all of their children are going to be standing in this exact same spot. And they're going to be looking into the promised land and if you read Joshua chapter 1, the message that Joshua tells them over and over and over again is kind of, it's kind of um, uh, most clearly portrayed in verse 9 where it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And he tells them, be strong and courageous. And why can we be strong and courageous? Because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's something that I believe the ten spies here forget. I think they forget that hey, God is with us. God has given us this promised land. It's something that the people of, it, uh, of Israel forget when they're too afraid to go in and when they end up ultimately dying in the wilderness. They forgot that God is with them. And when God is with them, we don't have to give in to fear. We don't have to be consumed uh, by it. 
I had a uh, a lady at my church in Alabama, who whose family was going through a really hard time. Their daughter had had, um, or her her granddaughter had had brain surgery that had gone horribly wrong and had left her, you know, in a in a uh, a a dis a, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not a vegetative state, but but she was in a disabled state, and. Uh, one of their sayings as they were walking through this process with her and as the family is they would always say, we want to inhale faith, exhale fear. We're, 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 we're inhaling faith. We're bringing faith in, uh, in those moments. And any fear that we have, let's just exhale it, just like a breath. Just let it go. Uh, and I think there's some value in that. But that's what we want to do as followers of Christ. We want to inhale faith and we want to exhale fear. And when we do that, we're going to find that, you know what, God is faithful, and God is trustworthy, and we don't have to be, we don't have to be afraid. Shortens the wilderness a little bit. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It does. Oh, man. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. We hope this has been a blessing to you. This is just us talking and sharing some of the things that God's working uh, in our own lives. Because listen, man, I need to hear that, I need to hear that whole message as much as anybody. Don't, don't be controlled by fear. Be controlled in faith. Uh, well, we're glad that you could be with us this week. Let me pray for us. And then after I pray, we'll uh, you guys go have a blessed day, okay? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. Father, thank you for each and every individual that's listening to this. Um, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're doing, God, we pray that they would devote time each and every day to your word. We believe that you are going to do great things. We believe your word promises us that you are going to do great things through our lives uh, as we connect with you through the reading and studying of your word. And so God, we just simply pray, Father, that you would fulfill your promises, that your word will not return void, um, but Lord, that it is profitable, that it is good for us um, as we study it. And so God, I pray that you would just be with each and every person, be with us as we continue to do this journey uh, in 2024. And so we love you and we praise you, Father. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us uh, and we'll catch you next time. God bless.